Hello everyone, I'm Lauren Valdez, and today I'm going to show you my essays that got me into UC Berkeley School of Public Health in the concentration health and social behavior. And then I'm gonna summarize a lot of the key principles and takeaways that you can use in your own personal statements and statements of purpose, even if you are not applying to a Master's of Public Health program. And here are some additional details. I was applying to dual degree programs in city planning and public health, so I had to apply to both programs separately and be accepted to both programs to get in. And because I know y'all love these kinds of details, my undergraduate um, GPA was a 3.3 from UC Berkeley, and my GRE scores were uh, about average for the verbal, like 150, 160, and below average for the math, so maybe like 130, 140. I can't find my scores because I took them more than a decade ago, but I remember it being something like that. And finally, I'm gonna be making videos all month on applying to grad school with more winning essay examples. So make sure to subscribe and follow along and let's get into it. So your statement of purpose is explaining why you want to get the degree. In this case, explaining why I want to get my master's in public health. And it also explains which direction you're going to, kind of what field you're moving into, and also really important, you need to explain why this school. What about this school um, is a good fit for you to get your master's degree? You also want to make sure you read the requirements well for the essay and you're answering all the questions that they ask you to answer in your statement of purpose or your personal statement. So I'm going to go through and read my statement of grant purpose. So I'm going to start with the opening paragraph. Just off the 4 or 5 freeway south of Los Angeles, a smoky skyline of oil refineries extends for miles along the coast. This industrial zone is home to the community of Wilmington, as well as the Port of Los Angeles, two rail yards, and the highest concentration of refineries anywhere in California. For three generations, my family, just one family in a vibrant Latino community of 60,000 people, has called Wilmington home. Both as a resident and as an activist in the local environmental justice movement, I have been repeatedly shocked and dismayed by the incredible power these toxic industries wield and frustrated by the disjointed approach to improving health equity for people affected by them. It is impossible for me to ignore the deep structural inequities that keep the people of Wilmington living in a hazardous environment with little access to quality health care, which is why I am determined to pursue a career in city planning and public health. So as you can see in this first paragraph, I'm really setting up my why like why I want to get a degree in public health. And I'm also showing, not telling. And what I mean by showing is I'm painting a picture of what my life is like. And I'm also opening it up with a bold paragraph around where I come from, which has inspired my career trajectory in public health. Um, and I'm also giving you insight into my worldview. So I'm not just telling you, oh, there's a lot of pollution here. I'm telling you my point of view that I am completely frustrated that these industries have so much power. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Access to information was always spotty growing up in Wilmington. You would hear about someone getting shot nearby. Maybe you would catch the person's name, maybe not. You would hear about an explosion at the refinery, wondering whether the fallout was settling silently on your neighborhood, but you never heard the positive news, the cultural events, the small victories, the strong community bonds. After graduating from college with a degree in architecture and moving back home, I committed to the struggles of a city that I saw with new eyes. I started working on a blog with my good friend Kat, The Wilmington Wire, with the humble goal of sharing information that accurately represented events and issues in the community. We started by reporting on local events. Later, as our confidence and audience grew, we began to delve into complex social issues affecting communities of color. I explored the region's extremely high incidence of asthma and its relationship to the nearby refineries and port. I attended neighborhood and city council meetings, summarized important decisions among local leaders, and highlighted the troublesome consequences of new projects, telling those that would be affected how to make their voices heard. 
Within a few months, we became the go-to contact for anyone who wanted to make an impact on Wilmington, fielding calls from nonprofits, researchers, radio shows, and newspapers. KQED, the Bay Area Public Radio affiliate, made me their Wilmington Community Health Correspondent, helping me reach a larger audience and engage in a broader dialogue about health equity in communities of color. In these paragraphs, I'm trying to highlight an experience that inspired me to pursue public health, but I'm also demonstrating my experience in an understanding of public health. And I just wanna note that this was all volunteer work, so I never actually had a job in public health. And I'm telling the story. I'm not going um, point by point and saying, first we did this, then we did this, then we did this. I'm telling a story. I'm showing vividly what was going on rather than restating my resume. A mistake I often see in people's essays is them going point by point through every experience they've ever had in their career, which sounds like an expanded resume. And what's more powerful is to tell a story and choose one or two experiences that really impacted you like letting the reader know what was going through your brain as you're doing this showing them by painting a picture of the steps and the actions that you're taking and then being reflective on what did you learn and what did you get out of that experience okay let's move on when we started all we wanted to do was inform people as it turns out and against all odds this simple role quickly led to direct activism We organized workshops for Women's Month discussing taboo topics like sexual health while taking into account the unique needs of women of color. The Greenlining Institute, a multi-ethnic public policy research and advocacy institute, asked us to organize a demonstration against two refineries in our area that had strongly backed 2010's Proposition 23, an anti-environmental measure. Because of our dedication to the Wilmington community and our clear sense of purpose, we were able to bring groups to the table that didn't normally work together. The things we were able to accomplish together served as a powerful lesson in the importance of collaboratively overcoming community silos. So in this paragraph, I'm again summarizing something that happened, but I'm also being really reflective on what I got out of that experience. This tiny little paragraph was so hard for me to write because defeating this ballot initiative was a ton of work and instead I needed to not focus on the details of everything I did, but instead the takeaways. And I had outside readers give me a lot of great feedback. You want to get an outsider's perspective on because it's really hard to be concise about experiences that were really meaningful and impactful to you. So if you have some outside readers that are close to you, they can give you really good feedback on what is too much detail or what is unnecessary. Next paragraph. The following year, I began research on a Fulbright Fellowship in Brazil, studying community participatory methods for evaluating the effects of the built environment on public health in the favelas of Rio. I worked closely with the Center for Health Promotion, CEDAPS, a Brazilian public health nonprofit, on developing the pilot youth build program in Brazil. We taught basic reading, writing, and math skills for 30 youth using the construction of a real community asset as a medium. I led the group in conducting evaluations of their built environment and its effect on their health. Through these evaluations, we map zones based on safety, access to healthy foods and transportation, among others, and developed five, 10, and 20 year maps as future visions of their community. In the execution phase of this plan, the students built handicap access for two houses whose residents could not leave due to their disabilities. The students also retrofitted hazardous homes and began a campaign to lobby the city to install closed sewage lines in their community, which occurred in 2013. Seeing the incredible obstacles these community leaders overcame despite minimal resources further inspired me to be a leader in my own community. So notice in this paragraph, it's really descriptive of what I was doing for my Fulbright research, working with this organization, but I'm also highlighting many aspects of the built environment that impact health. And I'm really highlighting my understanding of all the things that impact people's health, including access to healthy food and transportation and safety, and how those things are an important part of building a vibrant and healthy community. Next paragraph. 
Living and working in Rio confirmed my decision to pursue a career in public health and city planning to fulfill my commitment to Wilmington. In order to continue making positive change at home, I need to build my professional skills to match my passion. There is still such a long way to go to have a tangible impact on the health and quality of life of residents of my community. The problems we face are too complex for simple solutions. We can't address environmental degradation or create healthy communities without addressing issues of race, class, poverty, violence, and immigrant rights. Neither community members nor institutions are ready to address these issues on their own. It's going to take a cooperative approach with institutions validating community wisdom. I see the health and social behavior HSB concentration as an ideal training ground for developing an interdisciplinary approach to understanding and addressing the social, cultural, political, and economic structures underlying health disparities. So notice again in this paragraph how I'm being reflective on what I got out of that experience, how that experience helped me see public health differently and see that there was a need to be working locally with community members and validating community wisdom. So when I was on the admissions committee for Berkeley School of Public Health, A common mistake I saw in people's essays was a narrow understanding of what public health is and means. And this was a common mistake for people who were like just coming out of undergrad and didn't have that much experience, or for people who were looking at doing a master's in public health as a stepping stone to getting into med school. In those applications, the mistake was people not talking about how broad public health is and the interdisciplinary nature of public health, and instead focusing more on biological health and not necessarily focusing on the bigger factors that influence your overall health, like your environment, race, educational attainment, all those sort of things that also greatly impact health and health disparities. So in your essays, you really want to show that you have an in-depth understanding of what public health is. This interdisciplinary approach is embedded in the public health program at UC Berkeley. I admire HSB's focus on addressing the social determinants of health, while issues of race, social economic status, and gender are at the forefront of the conversation. I believe that the curriculum will best prepare me for my future work at the intersection of public health and city planning. I chose Berkeley's MCP program partly because of the opportunity to apply to the MPH program, where a cohort of MCP slash MPH students is leading the way in merging these fields. I met Professor Jason Colborn during my time in Brazil and have since begun work with him on projects in Richmond, California and Nairobi, Kenya. He has been an influential mentor in helping me explore the fields of public health and city planning. I'm excited to be taking a course on community participatory research with Professor Meredith Minkler in the upcoming spring semester, and I look forward to engaging with Professor Rachel Morello and learning more about her environmental justice work. Lastly, I would love to work with Professor Lori Dorfman to further develop my skills in producing multimedia content. The diversity of students, wealth of resources, and remarkable faculty at Berkeley will prepare me for working at the intersection of planning, public health, and policy. So this paragraph is really the paragraph where I address why this program, why this university. And this is a really important part of every school you apply to, really connecting to the specifics of what you will get out of attending and being in that program. They want to know that choosing you is going to be good for them. And so you're convincing them that you have an understanding of their program and how you're going to maximize the resources of their program. And notice that this is only one paragraph. So this doesn't have to be a big portion of your essay. Most of your essay should be focused on you, but you definitely need at least one paragraph in there to show that you've done your homework on the school and you know that it's gonna be a good fit for you. Here's the last paragraph. As our world continues to rapidly urbanize, we need to be prepared to address the environmental health hazards imposed on disenfranchised communities locally and globally. 
There has never been a more critical time for planners, public health experts, and community members to be speaking the same language. The dual master's degree in city and regional planning and public health at UC Berkeley will give me the skills I need to bridge the gap between design, health, and activism, and incorporate this interdisciplinary approach directly into my future efforts to make Wilmington and cities like it more sustainable, healthy, and equitable. So in this concluding paragraph, notice how I just kind of tie everything together. I have my personal point of view in here that we need a more interdisciplinary approach to solving health problems. Um, And then I tie it back to how Berkeley is going to be a good place for me to do that. There are no rules for concluding paragraphs, but you want to come back to and summarize the main points you've already made and then leave the reader thinking like, yes, this person is meant for this program and it's the next right thing for their career. I just want to come back and summarize the full statement. So it starts out with an opening paragraph about where I come from and how that's inspired me to be interested in public health. And then I only talk about two experiences that impacted me and made me want to further pursue public health, that being blogging for the Wilmington Wire and then doing a Fulbright Fellowship in Brazil working with a public health organization. And remember that I spend very little time actually describing what I did, and I spend a lot more time being reflective on what I learned and what I got out of those experiences. And both of those inspire me to want to do grassroots work in the community, as well as better understand the complexities of public health and all the factors that impact health equity and health disparities. And then I go into a paragraph on why this school, why this program. I talk about specific classes I want to take and professors I want to work with. um, And then I just summarize that all up in a conclusion. So in your essay, you really want to make sure that you give the reader a sense of who you are and what you care about, what it is that you want to do and accomplish and why it is that you want to pursue um, a master's degree. And in the case of a master's of public health, you really need to demonstrate that you have an understanding of the social determinants of health. And then you want to make sure that you are talking about specific reasons for why you should be in that program, like specific resources they have, specific professors. And then finally, you want want it to read like a story by showing vivid examples from your life. You do not want it to read like an extended resume or like a running list of all your accomplishments. You want your thoughts, your feelings, your your reflections to be also in the statement. Not all schools require personal statements, but the personal statement is distinct in that it's more of a narrative of who you are as a person. It should reinforce points you've made in your statement of purpose and reinforce why it is that you want to get this master's degree and why this is the right moment in your life to do this. What the readers are looking for is they want to connect with you as a person. Just know that you're going to be someone who vibes well in the program, but they also like to see things like you being a leader, you being someone who overcomes barriers, you being someone who's going to add diversity to the program program or being able to add different perspectives and worldviews and that sort of thing. So here is your space to show here's who I am. Here's what I believe. Here's what I will add to the program. And again, you want to read the requirements and make sure that you are answering any questions that they, they specifically want answered. Okay, so let's start. In 2010, I visited a friend's class at the University of Miami where a Haitian student was giving a presentation on his experience studying in the U.S., He told us, in your country, you go off to college and leave your community behind. In my country, I'm the one who has had the privilege to go off and be educated, and everyone expects me to come back and be a leader in my community. His words have stuck with me ever since then. Coming from a low-income community of color with parents who never finished college, being accepted to UC Berkeley was a major event. For my family and I, college represented a way to leave behind the struggles we grew up with to have experiences they always dreamed for me. I worked hard and made personal sacrifices for this achievement, but I attribute my success and my ability to overcome barriers to the community of people who have supported me throughout my life. 
I have been privileged to receive a world-class education and fellowships to work and travel around the world, but I have a responsibility to return to my community and give back. So notice in these first two paragraphs how I'm talking about my desire to want to give back to my community. And this actually parallels well with what I said in my statement of purpose in wanting to do work in Wilmington, my hometown, and be able to make it a better place for others to live. So I'm kind of riffing off that theme in my personal statement. In contrast to the individualistic ideals highly valued in American society, Latino culture is strongly communal. When family friends were struggling, we took them and their five children into our home for a year, no questions asked. When my family had major financial problems, there was never any question of having a place to stay and food to eat because we could always count on the support of extended family. When my family couldn't afford my dance classes, my dance studio covered my competition fees in exchange for me teaching a few hours of class per week. So notice in this in this short paragraph, it's very high level, but it gives you a sense that I come from a place where I have had struggles and people around me have had struggles, but we support each other. And I can give you some sob stories about crazy shit that happened in my life when we had to go move in with my grandma when I was 16 in a different state and all these terrible, terrible things. But people don't necessarily want your sob story and um, not all of us feel comfortable sharing really deep personal experiences of bad things we went through. And, and some people think that in a personal statement, you have to like put together these sob stories, but you don't. What you want to put together is the takeaway. So if you've overcome some really hard barriers and gone through some stuff, tough stuff. You can definitely mention those things in your personal statement, but you want to focus on the takeaway, what you got out of it, rather than here's all the terrible stuff that I've been through. Instead, you want to leave the reader with, I can overcome things that are hard. You don't want to leave the reader with, oh, feel sorry for me. Moving on. Two weeks before the start of my senior year of high school, I was in a near fatal car accident. I spent two months hospitalized and a full year recovering. It was a physical and emotional struggle to return to school and finish with my graduating class. I have never forgotten how our entire community came together to help my family. People I had never met came to visit me in the hospital and show their support. My friends would come over to babysit, helping me into the bathroom and around the house just to give my mom a break. Neighbors and friends would help take my siblings to school and dance because my mom still had four other children to care for. All these moments have shaped my dedication to giving back to my community to try to repay just a tiny fraction of what they have given me. So this paragraph is another example of that. Going through this car accident was extremely hard. I had to relearn how to walk, but I'm not going into the details of all of that stuff. Instead, I'm focused on the takeaway that I've had a community of people support me and I wanna now be able to give back While studying architecture in college, I focused on working with disadvantaged communities in Latin America. Through these transformative experiences, I realized that where I needed to be and where I could make the biggest impact was in my own disadvantaged community, where I fully understood the context of local problems. While the American dream teaches us that all you have to do to be successful is work hard, it isn't as simple for many people of color. There are so many structural barriers that make it difficult to access higher education, keep us living in hazardous environments, and fuel discrimination against us. It isn't enough for me as an individual to have overcome these barriers. I have to return to my roots to put the skills I've gained into practice, to make my community a more equitable place, a place where many others have access to the opportunities that I have had. So this paragraph, I'm making a really bold statement that this is my worldview, that there's a lot of disparities and a lot of barriers placed on communities of color. And this was extremely hard for me to write because I know a lot of us are really humble and it's really hard to think that we can make this kind of impact and it feels really uncomfortable to write something like this. And I got lots of help from the people who love me the most because my original versions of this were so 
so humble and I wasn't really talking about myself in a strong way. And then for the concluding paragraph, I have chosen to pursue a career in city planning and public health to address not just the environmental health hazards that threaten the health and safety of my community, but also broader issues of community development, access to education, immigrant rights, violence, and poverty. I have begun this work as an environmental justice activist at the grassroots level, but it's now my time for me to tackle these issues as a highly skilled professional. Working as an activist in my own community, I've been frustrated by the work of academics and nonprofits who look at the wrong problems because they do not incorporate real community participation. At the same time, I see the limitations of activism that doesn't mobilize institutional support to influence long-term change. The UC Berkeley dual masters in city and regional planning program and public health is perfectly positioned to give me the skills I need to be a leader in my community and bridge the gap between activism and professionalism to help transform my community. So in this last paragraph, I really tie together a lot of threads for my statement of purpose and my personal statement. So I see getting these master's degrees being the tools that I need to be able to bridge that gap between academia and the problems that are happening in my own local community. So you can see how in this personal statement, it really goes hand in hand with the statement of purpose and reinforces my viewpoint that I'm passionate about communities of color, but I see a master's in public health being the next step for me to keep doing the work that I need to do as a community activist. So to summarize, in your personal statement, you really want to show who you are as a person and why this master's degree is the right fit for you and what is next for you in your life and your career. So I'm going to be doing Zoom office hours. This will be a private call for anyone to join where I will review your application and give you feedback. Uh, to get more info, sign up below. And finally, I'm going to be doing videos all month about applying to grad school with more examples of winning essays. So if you have any questions or any other topics you would like covered, please leave some comments below. Uh, so please subscribe to follow along.